What is a home lab? Do you have one? Do you want one? And do you need one? Let's look at all that here in just a minute and let's go ahead and build one today. Y'all stay with me. All right, home lab. So if you talk about home automation, uh, servers, dealing with operating systems, uh, testing software out, um, what else could it be? You could be backing up all your home devices, all your camera DVRs, um, NVRs, all your uh, laptops, desktops, everything. You can do that. You can test out all kinds of free software. And most of the things I'm going to talk about today are free. Uh, and I like free stuff. So a home lab is the name given to a server or multiple server setup that resides locally in your home or where you host several applications and virtualized systems for testing and developing or for home and functional usage. So a server can be anything from a Raspberry Pi, this is a single board computer, any kind of single board computer, to a normal desktop computer that you would have at home or at the office or whatever, or you can jump into a big enterprise server. You know, one you would find on eBay or a, a closeout, lease closeout sale or um, something like that. Today, we're going to talk about just a normal desktop computer, uh, old. I've had it for a long time, and that's what I'm going to use for my home lab. What I want to do, I want to set up Home Assistant. Now, when you start talking about home automation, there are several different things. You can have HomeKit, you can have Home Assist, uh, or Home Assistant. Uh, several other things are all kind of protocols and devices, doorbells, thermostats, cameras, water heaters, heat pumps. I mean, the list is just crazy big. So what we want to do today, I want to start out with my home lab setup. And I've had it on several different machines. I've had it on my NAS and I've had it on my normal computer. But I want to set up a virtualized server, and the, the software I'm going to use for that is called Proxmox. And links for everything will be in the description. I'm going to try to describe this best I can without it being a three-hour video. So what we got, we're going to go to Proxmox. I can't get my drive out. So if you've watched my videos, you know I've built a Ventoy multi iso drive where i have all kind of isos on here all right so we're at proxmox and this is a virtualization or hypervisor it's called and it's free now you can subscribe and, and get all kind of fancy stuff but just for your home lab you don't have to this can be free uh and it'll actually run on this little raspberry pi which is odd but we're going to run it on a computer. We're going to have an i5-4570 with 16 gigs of RAM and two SSDs. I mean, a normal desktop computer. It's, it's quite old, too. We're going to download this. It's not a big download. And this allows you to use all kind of operating systems to test or play with or actually have production type stuff in your home. So... All right, so I'm gonna switch my screen for my little uh, desktop. Yeah, I'm recording. All right, do we have audio here? We got audio here. All right, I'm gonna hit power button. All right, this is a Dell, so I'm gonna hit F12. There's the Dell logo. One time boot menu. I'm gonna show you what you need to have in the BIOS, okay, you're going to go to virtualization support in the BIOS setup, and you're going to go virtualization, enable, VT for direct I.O., you're going to have it enabled. That's all you got to do. And I have my USB Ventoy drive plugged in, and it's got the Proxmox ISO on it. I'm going to hit F12 again. 
it's going to create a boot menu. And we're going to go down to my J Micron Generic. That's what my drive is. We're going to hit enter. And see, I have a Proxmox 7.2 and a Windows 11. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit enter on this. And we're going to go in normal mode. And you'll, you'll see the screen here. And it you have install Proxmox or advanced options. Now, you don't ever have to. At least I've never had to go to advanced. So I hit install. And it's going to look like a Linux application installing. It's going to run through. It's going to find all your hardware, all your network devices, or your in network interfaces. And... So you've got to go through and scroll through the EULA. Move myself so I can do this. And then we'll go down to Agree. All right, now it's going to give you the options to install to. So you, I've got my... 111, my 2 terabyte, and my 230. You don't ever want to go down here to this one. This is your installer. See, I'd done that one time and I wiped it out, so we don't want to do that. I'm going to install it on the 120 gig drive and hit next. We are in the United States. We'll go down to, and the closest thing I can get is uh, New York. Where's it at? Right there. I'm not in New York. And God help me if I ever am, but um, that's the time zone I'm in. So hit next. All right, you'll put in your super secret password. And if you're, if it's going to be facing the internet, you'd want to um, have this pretty secure. Sorry. And you got to put a, a valid email address in. All right, now this is where you can name it. You can pick which network adapter. I've got two. I have a one gig on that's on board the motherboard, and then I put a two point five gig network adapter in because I want to be able to have two point five gig networking at some point. You can set a static IP address. I'm gonna come right here and make it 245. And that's all you gotta do. You can rename your fully qualified domain domain name or you can let it do itself. It's gonna show you all the settings and you're gonna hit install. And it, on, on this machine, it just takes uh, just a few minutes to do it. So what it's going to do, it's going to format your drive, create the partitions, install the, the OS, and set up the web server, and all that, reboot, and then come up. And then I'll show you how to hit it from there, and then we'll go through a few uh, setups that I like to do. I've done this about seven or eight times now, just playing. This is going to be for real. So... I say that today and then I'll wipe it out tomorrow. So, all right. So now it's telling me that we're going to be at dot two forty five at port eight thousand and six when it reboots. So it'll go through the reboot. It'll go away. Very quick, even for this old machine. All right. So now we're at this screen. We can actually disconnect our monitor, keyboard, and mouse. As you can see, here is the URL that we need to go to. So let's move our keyboard and mouse out of the way for that. 
and we will switch to our screen capture and open up a browser we will go to HTTPS Okay, so once you get to that URL, you're greeted with this. Your connection isn't, pri isn't private. You just go ahead and click Advanced and Continue Unsafe. It's because you don't have a certificate installed for your web server. But since you're at home, you're probably okay. So, so you're greeted with your Proxmox login, and it's always root, R-O-T. And then the password that you set up during the install. And as soon as you get here, it's going to tell you you don't have a subscription, but you don't have to worry about that. We're going to try to take care of that here in just a few minutes. So you just click OK. And here is the user interface for Proxmox. And you start out in a data center view, which gives you all your options for a virtual server. Backup storage, two-factor authentication, firewalls, the whole bit. It gives you a really nice dashboard of your node, and this is called a node, and it tells you how much memory, how much CPU, it's got little uh, graphs for it, or little dials rather, little controls. And it is a neat dashboard. It gives you an event log down the bottom. Under the data center, you actually have your node and it calls it PVE. And here is where you go in and you can set up your storage, your how much processor memory you want to use on virtual machines or containers. Another thing when you get in the home lab, you start talking about containerization. That means a little tiny computer within your server to run one application and you can have several of those little containers running one application and it's uh, it gets into a whole big deal uh, it's it's neat technology gets a little complicated but it's neat so under under my node summary you have a dashboard and it tells me I have four cores under say this i5 at 3.2 gigahertz what kernel I'm using, uh, how much usage, how much network traffic. Um, it's pretty, pretty cool. It's, you can go to your storage manager and see what all you've got here. And from here, you can actually upload ISO images, container templates, um, just there, there's no limit to what you can do except for how much hardware you have. So right here we have it formatted my drive, my 120 gig drive. It formatted the first section of it, first partition, and 30 gigs, 29.15. The second one would be bulk storage at 64 gigs. So you can use this for your storage. So now that I'm in the node here, I want to add some storage to it. So I have my 120 gig drive, then I have my 250 gig drive. I want to add it to my storage. So I'm going to go to the data center view and go to storage, and I'm going to do add, and I'm going to add an LVM, which is logical volume manager, I think. So we're going to say VM storage. It's part of an existing volume group. And there it is, VM storage. I think what I called it. And we're going to hit add. So now, yep, that was my 250 gig drive. So now I have my 120 gig drive and now my 250. Now I can start making things happen with this. 
And so that's setting up your home lab from the start. The next thing we're going to do, I don't know how long I've been going here. I've been going for quite a while. So we'll end this video here. This is installing Proxmox on a desktop PC to start your home lab. The next video that I do, we'll do one where you're actually tweaking Proxmox to look better, run better, and get ready for our first virtual machine. So that's going to be a good one. So anyway, I hope y'all get something out of this. I hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to be notified. And I hope everybody's having a great day and a great week. And like I always tell you, if you have any questions, I answer all the questions. I respond to all the comments and the whole bit. So feel free to ask me questions. If I can't find the answer, I'll find somebody that has it. So, so I hope everybody's having a good day. And like I always say, until the next video, thanks for watching.